right guys, we are here with the Line 6 Relay G70. Yes, there's a Line 6 product in Kevy's house again. Ugh. Actually, you know what? I'm actually not that afraid of it. Um, to be honest, I want to buy it. Uh, yes, I said that. <laughs> you can mark my words. Um, I don't know if I can afford it though. Um, on sale right now, it's $549 Canadian at Long & McQuaid, regular $679. Now you get the transmitter and the receiver. Uh, obviously, I've got the transmitter right here in my hot little hands, and voila! And it's got a belt clip on it, that sort of stuff. Um, when you open it up, there's two little buttons on the sides you got to push and then pull down. And your batteries are there, your switches are there for changing channels, etc. And there's some other little goodies there that we have no clue about until we actually read through the manual. And you know what? I'm going to encourage you guys to download the manual because I have included a link in the video description below for Long and McQuaid and for the manual so that you can read about all the stuff that even I still don't understand about this thing. Um, to me, a wireless system, I just want to plug in my junk and play. I mean, I don't want to screw around with 10 bazillion settings, but there is some useful settings in here that I think you need to be aware of because they're very useful for all of us, period. Okay, but there is some stuff that'll probably be completely useless for a lot of us at the same time. But it's clean. Okay, so, without further ado, let's get into the programming on this thing a little bit and talk a little bit about the features. Now, I've already downloaded the manual and I've kind of skimmed through it. Um, but, I will eventually learn more, as many of you will too, when you download the manual for free. Because uh, we do want to have a short video here, not one that takes five years. Um, but, let me just bring my guitar over this way. And then I can get access to some stuff that I need. Okay. This is so much fun. All right. Now, we do have, of course, our screen. I love 4K cameras because now we can actually see screens generally. Anyways, edit. Now, there's a scene thing in here. I don't get a lot about it, but it has something to do with programming, different settings for, I guess, different instruments and so on that you're going to use this with, because I guess you can use it on more than just guitar. <coughs> like a bass guitar, perhaps, of course. Um, it is for guitar and likely for bass. Um, don't know about active versus non-active pickups or active versus passive. Uh, that information would be in the manual for us, okay? So I'm not going to say whether or not it will work on active pickups. So all my pickups are all passive pickups in my guitars. However, when we rotate the little dial here in the middle, and we push it, it flashes. And we can change to any one of the included 16 different things. Or we can have it just go into scan mode. Um, I would say don't use scan, okay? I would go definitely just find a channel that it works with and lock it down so that this way you're set for that area, okay? Now you could, you could have it you know, just go in and scan. So um, let's actually see how the scan would work out for us. So there's scan there. Now it's gonna scan. Now I think the body... Okay, so it's saying channel four is okay. Now, does the body pack have that feature? No, body pack does not have that feature. So if we uh, actually rotate over, let's go to uh, channel four to four. 
Oh, channel two, sorry. I don't know why I read two for. Three. <laughs> That's funny. It's just scanning, like, I'm trying to change with it. Okay, so that's three. I'm not sure if scan is a good idea. Um, let's go, uh, let's go with exit. Um, but I am on channel 14. And on channel 14, for me at least in my studio, my house here, uh, 14 works absolutely flawless. I took my guitar for a run around the house trying to find the right channels where it doesn't glitch out because it's very important to me even in here that I don't glitch out. And 14 for my house, my situation, channel 14 works absolutely perfect. I did try other channels and yeah, it didn't quite work right. Um, we had a lot of dropouts even just getting out the door even. I, uh, out of my studio and uh, <laughs> eight feet away to my wife's desk and it's like glitch, you know. Sometimes I got to the bathroom and, um, you know, which is like 50 feet away and it's like glitch, you know. And I'm all on one level here. So it's like, I got walls and stuff to go through, right? But generally you don't have the walls. You're all line of sight, you're in an open area. But I, I wanted to see how much power this thing could actually push and stay stable. And 14 for me, actually, in here is fantastic. Um, anyways, we do have cable tone selection as well. Um, now, currently it's off, but if we take a, a clean channel here, let me just reach over. There we go. On the clean channel, you will hear the difference. Okay. brightens up a little bit as we're going down and it dulls down a bit on 100 feet. So you can go in, in increments up, up to 100 feet. So you get uh, 3 feet, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 feet is max. Okay. Now, on a clean channel, that I think would be useful. I've tried it on dirty, and you really can't hear the difference uh, on dirty, so it's kind of like, well, I don't know. Maybe some people can. I, I can't. Um, anyway, so then we have our outputs A to C, okay, or A plus C. Um, we have several outputs on this thing. We've got A, B, we've got tuner out. Now, this is to go to your own tuner. This has a built-in tuner, but it kind of suckies. Um, got uh, direct out, or in this case, um, balanced XLR out. This way you don't need a DI box uh, if you're gonna go direct to a PA, but then it's like, okay, what about my effects? Uh, well, if you've got a pedal board on stage that has XLRs like the GT1000 wood, you can go out from here into it and then out again, I would imagine, if I remember the busing right on that. I've never used the XLRs on that. Um, on and off switch, uh, nine volt power supply for your, for your pedal board power supply, USB power supply, but also for doing firmware updates as well. Okay, and you do have a ground lift that's effective only for this port. Now, the only people I could think of that would wanna use XLR out would be somebody with an acoustic guitar. Um, but then you still have the problem, well, what if I wanna use a chorus pedal with my acoustic or, you know, a reverb pedal. Well, you're gonna to have to have chorus and reverb dictated to you by your soundboard engineer and hopefully that soundboard has those effects built in and then you can get them that way. Uh, Cause direct out is just direct out to PA. So it has nothing to do with your main amp gear. Um, anyways, um, so there are some things, like I said, are, are kind of pointless. The gain section here. Now this is set factory default to zero, which is regular gain or unity gain. So we can back it off and lower our output to minus 18, or we can bring it up as high as plus 12. Now that's a useful feature, okay? I like that, uh, especially if you have a, um, low uh, output set of pickups, like on strats and tellies, they have low output generally, um, that this would be a handy feature. But even for humbuckers, 
if you want a bit of extra punch without changing your amp settings that can give you that extra punch you know um, it's kind of like running your your volume pedal on your board you're putting more punch without changing your volume on your board on your amp switching color that is uh, just for switching the color of this from green uh, to blue or orange purple aqua or white I like green it can stay on green uh, remove seams. So any seams that you've programmed, uh, you can just remove one at a time or whatever. Okay, adding a scene, channel 14. Um, okay, uh, LCD brightness. I don't have any scenes programmed. LCD brightness is high or low. That's all you get. So if it's too bright for you on stage, you can lower it or too bright in the house, whatever. Okay, uh, and you can do that. I like it bright. Um, Auxiliary in is always on, uh, or you can actually say scene only, and that's it. So, so I'm I'm not sure about the scene thing. Like I said, we all need to read the manual. There's only so much that I, I want to even cover in a video like this to keep the time down. Info. That's going to tell us our firmware version. Right now we're at 1.03. Now there may be a firmware update. I would advise doing it. Firmware updates. Uh, add more stability as well as sometimes we get new features added into our gear that is programmable like our boss katanas and you know the me80 or you know what have you or in this case this line six guitar system okay uh, and we can also hit escape out of there factory reset as well push that it's either cancel or yes let's do a full reset so you want to change your entire programming because uh, you did all those scenes and programmed and whatever you want to reset the whole pedal Maybe you made a mistake. You don't know how to undo it. Well, then you just hit Factory restore and away you go So anyways, um, I'm just gonna hit escape to cancel now you can press the home button and you're back to here Okay, but if you're in here already Regardless where we're at you can just hit escape anyways, and you're still back to home. So they've wasted space They've wasted a button feature. It's it's pointless. You know, we just need edit and this is push to set. So, you know, and edit gets us escaped anyways. Push and hold gets you to the tuner. It cuts off the signal. Hit it again, you're back. Okay, so if you have a tuner of your own you want to use, go to the tuner output port. And if your tuner does not have a muting system, then you would just push this and it would automatically mute. And then you gotta look at two tuners. So make sure you're looking at the one that's actually yours that you're using, okay? Um, but yeah, the one thing I find that I really, I, I really don't like is this whole uh, scanning system. Like that's, it, it's scanning for a clean channel. Now it doesn't tell us the frequency, but now it says channel nine is a good clean channel. Um, well, that may be for in here, but what about for the long distance? Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But if you want to accept that, then just press the button, say accept, and then go to your transmitter, and then switch your transmitter manually over, manually over to channel 9. Because the transmitter, um, it doesn't have the scanning feature. Um, let's see. No, it doesn't you have to manually set it accordingly so while it's sitting there i'm just messing with channels here uh, but there is a switch on this thing and i have no idea what it does uh, again we're gonna have to look at the, the the manual for that and it has a usb input port as well on the transmitter um, so but that's that and we're gonna stick with channel 14. anyways um I think, you know, I've never been really impressed by Line 6 products until now. Um, and I actually want this thing. I'm just not sure how I'm going to afford it. Um, I've bought way too much stuff lately, so um, let me just shut this off. Now, as far as you guys want star ratings, you always do. For somebody who could make use of virtually all of the features in this thing, I would say that I would have to rate this fairly at a four and a half. I personally find that there are some features, especially that XLR out is completely pointless. 
Um, having dual outs, I mean, that could be useful to some people, I suppose. Um, <coughs> the auxiliary in probably would be able to flip my beat buddy into that, and then the secondary output is going to go wherever or whatever, however it's set up. I don't know. Um, there's, like I said, still some stuff to learn about these ports. I know how a lot of this stuff works because I skimmed through the manual, plus I learned a lot of stuff just by playing around with it for a few minutes. But for me, uh, it's more important to just have something that's stable. It's not going to glitch out when I'm playing. That's a big thing for me. has to do that. This actually does that. Channel 14, not one dropout anywhere in the house. Going through all the walls and metal structure and everything else that's in here. Um, I'm impressed. I am really impressed. Even my Joyo. Um, I can get to the bathroom with my Joyo set, which is like a $100 cheapy set. You guys have seen them on my channel. If not, check out Joy Wireless on my channel. They're really good. I really like them. They were definitely a really good starting point for me for wireless, and it got me addicted. Um, but then I ended up going to the Boss. I wanted more professional use, etc. I've had the X5 systems. Um, the X5s are generally uh, really decent, but not for a touring musician by any means. Um, you know. Uh, but the Boss systems, they're good for touring musicians, they're, they're great for, you know, beginners even, and they're only 300 bucks. Um, so they're definitely going to be a lot cheaper, and they're the form of what I like to call true wireless freedom, because you don't have a body pack, right, uh, that you're tied down to. It's two little units, you clip them together, they search for a frequency that's clean, you plug them in, that's it, you're done. Okay, I mean, that's perfect. Um, just that after several years of use and abuse, mine had finally screwed up and they have to go in for a repair or replacement. Um, and I, I'm glad I got the Line 6 system actually as a loner because uh, it gives me a chance to actually play more around with body packs. I've played around with a couple in the past, didn't care for them much. Uh, different brands though. Uh, but this one is pretty good. And everything's all metal enclosure on both. You know, um, and very compact too. And this locks the cable in, so it's not going to come out of here on you. Um, and it's a pretty strong uh, clip on the back of this. It's definitely put into the case really well, um, so it's going to be very durable um, in the end. Um, you know, very simplistic as far as main usage goes. Just getting yourself up and doing stuff takes a matter of a few minutes. Now, I would suggest probably using the scan feature in your house to see what channel it comes up with and then try that channel and then walk around and go through obstacles um, and see if it cuts out or not. Now, it's no guarantee you're not going to get a dropout, but, you know, I've got like f over 50 feet of distance I've covered in the apartment uh, in length and stuff and just around a corner from my studio to the main area. And channel 14, I had absolutely zero glitches. I even went right up to my shower in the bathroom, uh, which is really causing some serious blockades, and it's got a metal frame on it, and my washer and dryer are in my bathroom. Uh, so that's metal for this thing to absorb and everything. Uh, and it did great. I'm very impressed, because even my Joyo doesn't do that good. Um, that is really good, but, you know, but these systems, by the way, are more, they are line of sight. Um, so they're based upon best usage in open areas, not going through walls and all that stuff. And um, so the good test was to actually put it to the test. Now some of the channels did drop out on me that I tried. I tried a few of them. And um, then I thought, well, you know what? 14 is twice the number of 7. And I thought, okay, well 7 worked out to a certain point, but what about 14? Um, and it works perfect on 14 in here, so I'm going to leave it that way. I don't know how long I have the unit for, uh, so I'm not sure if there will be an update review or not on this thing, but at this point, I would definitely have to put this system... Uh, I don't know, I, I'd say for me, it's, for me it's, a, it's a 4 out of 5 uh, for me personally, because there's a lot of features that are completely pointless. Um, four and a half for those that can actually make use of all of that uh, stuff or the majority of it, then I'd probably put it more to the four and a half. As far as price goes though, retail at 679 Canadian, not a chance. I wouldn't pay it. 
Uh, there's too much extra garbage in there that actually doesn't belong. Um, but um, especially that XLR out, that was just, I don't know. Um, but at 549, I think it's definitely worthwhile taking a good serious look at this. Um, but I, I would recommend this more for intermediate to professionals. Because it is professional class gear, I don't realistically think in the hands of beginners it would be a good thing. They have enough problems just trying to learn how to play guitar. Uh, I know, I was a beginner once too. Um, but, um, you know, they're not, not everybody's going to be a touring musician either. That's the other thing. Uh, so, but for intermediates that want a good wireless system um, and pros, I would, I would say that this should realistically be a good system uh, for that. Um, probably more superior in the pro area than, bot, than the Boss system might be that I have, but Boss does have another system better than mine, uh, which would be more geared toward professionals. Um, but um, at $300, it's affordable at least, and I would recommend the Boss systems for beginner to intermediate, but intermediate to pro I would go uh, Boss for the intermediate for sure, um, and for this thing, more for the intermediate to pro guys. And um, if you don't mind dabbling into some programming to set this thing up the way you want it or for whatever uses, it does have a lot packed into it. Uh, but like I said, there are some very useful, fe useless features that probably nobody would even use. And you pay for all those features, by the way. You should know that. Uh, but anyhow, that's what I got for you. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. The info will be there. Uh, links for Long and McQuaid, links for their, well, their description will be there, as well as a link for the manual for you to download the manual and read all about everything about this thing, especially all the stuff we couldn't cover even in a video at this length. Till next time, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.